Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing today? We built a bare bone custom login provider last time together. It supports basic scenarios like categories and level filtering, and it outputs the logs to a file. And we're going to look into iterating the provider in this video. We're going to look into reach the content of the login messages as well as how to accept user settings from the configuration files. These are one of those uh, advanced topics. If you haven't done this before, it may take a while to connect the dots. I'm going to explain it while we're building it together. I highly recommend you to fork the repository and try it by yourself. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Before we write any code, let's take a look at what it looks like. This add simple console extension method is provided in the console login provider. It takes in the delegate to set a simple console format options. For example, usually you want the color to be there so that the log is easier to read. However, there are some consoles that doesn't support the color code, like in some containers, and it would output a lot of noise. In that case, we want the color behavior to be disabled. And single line. I'm always a fan of single line logs. Point is, user might have different scenarios to configure the logger to behave differently. And we, as the logging provider authors, we need to know how to provide those settings. At this moment, I assume you all understand how to build a bare-bone logging provider. Time to step up the game. What if I want to output more information? For example, category name, the log level, so on and so forth. That is easy. We need to find out where do we get those information. For example, log level is already there. Category name is not as straightforward, but it's not far away either. We could get it from the logger provider. So let's do it. Firstly, let's add a constructor to my logger. It will take in the category name, and we're going to note it down as a field so that we could fetch it from the log method. Now let's update the log method. Before we write to the message body, we're going to output the category. Followed by the log level. Now we need to provide the category name in the provider. Let's run and see what we get. Okay, great. But how about to the information that is not there already? For example, file name. I mean, instead of the hard coded file name, how about let the user to decide? In that case, we need a new concept, logging configurations. Here's how to provide one. Firstly, we need to add another NuGet package, the Microsoft Extensions Logging Configuration. Then we'll go ahead and create an option class. This is a poll code, nothing special, but it holds all the properties that you want the customer to customize. First, it is output file path. We're going to give it a default name of output.log. Now assume there is a value set for it. How does the iLogger consume it? We need to bridge everything up from the option to the provider to the iLogger. The answer lies in iOptions pattern. Here's how you do it. In my logger provider, create a constructor. It takes in the nine options monitor of my logger options. I'm going to create a field to save the current options. Then we're going to do observe the change for values. And of course, update the current options accordingly. A little bit of housekeeping to dispose the change token. And then I'll create a private method to return the current option. You'll see why in a second. What does the code say? That is, if there is an 
uh, I option of my logger options that will be provided by the IOC, it will be injected into my logger provider. But who decides the file path? It is not the provider, but the iLogger itself, right? That means we need a way for the iLogger to get it. Now we could pass along the file name on line 22, just like how we handle the category name. It will require us to change code every time when there's a new configuration coming in. And also, when there's new options, the iLogger need to know. So this is how we code it. Basically, my logger takes in a delegate that returns my logger options. And when it is needed, invoke get options. Here's our file name by the configuration, and we can use that to replace the hard coded file name. At this moment, you probably already realized why I had that private method in my logger provider. So far, we have been assuming my logger options will be there in the IOC. It actually won't, unless we do something. So what do we do? We provide an extension method of a load for the user to use. This delegate here will allow the user to customize my logger options, and we'll see how is it used in a second. Now we cause the other overload, and then we provide the configurations into the IOC. And that's it, let's try it out. Coming back to the web API, during the initialization of the login builder, let's call the overload with the delegate. And let's pick an output file path. Let's say custom log file dot text. And let's run it. Whew, so it was not working. The output log was uh, left over. And once I hit the weather forecast endpoint, the logs has been output to custom log file.txt. That is great. Let's step further up. We see those settings in appsettings.json. Is it possible to allow the user to set the file name there? Well, since I asked, of course the answer is yes. And here is how. We are actually very close to what we want, but we need to make sure that the options of my logger will be provided even when the user do not provide the delegate. In other words, we need to update the other method in the extension. It is so common that logger provider options has a dedicated method register provider options for this scenario. There are two type parameters, the options and the provider, and send it to the service collection. The rest will be dealt with. At this moment, I'm going to recommend add a provider alias to the provider. This is what I mean. Go to the provider class, Add an attribute of provider alias. Let's call it file provider. Why? Because uh, we're going to use it. This is how you use JSON to set uh, provider specific settings. We have set the output file to another log file dot log. Now we'll need to update the initialization code a little bit to avoid overwrite it. It's time to see how it works. Another log file dot log. That's it for today. Now you know everything about custom login provider. I hope you enjoy it. Do you still remember the example that I showed you for the custom login provider to output logs to the Android the log cat in the last video? You should be able to do it now for yourself. Keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.